that, my friends, was our landing gear getting sandblasted and then transferred from my car to Brian's car. They can start rusting within 24 hours, especially in an environment with a lot of humidity like we have in Florida. So Brian is taking the pieces to his house. Let's go talk about what else is going on with the project. Whenever you take on a restoration project of this scale, you quickly learn that there are two of everything. The airplane is symmetrical, so you spend eight hours, 10 hours working on one part, just the flaps, removing glue and tape from a wing flap. And then as soon as you get done all that work, you, you realize there's another one. So you're just restarting that process all over again. Lately, I've still found myself removing glue and all kinds of shit off of more parts like the flaps and the fuel tanks, cleaning the fuel tanks. It's no secret that this particular airplane was made to never be worked on again. There are spot welds all over anything that could use a spot weld on this airplane and the factory workers were not particularly conservative with the amount of glue they were using for certain things. So it hasn't made our job easy just because this airplane was never made to easily be restored. They wanted to get these airplanes done as quickly as possible. The quicker they got these airplanes made, the more money that they made. So that's just how it was. Part of our mission with the restoration is to make things easier to maintain, easier to adjust, so that when we need to do something down the road in the future, we don't have to tear the thing apart to work on it. Everything about this project is just problem solving and having the time to do it. We're looking at perhaps another two years from right now until we see this thing flying again. But I'm just grateful for what we've gotten done and I'm, I'm so glad I have another airplane to be able to fly, have access to the Taylor Craft, or if I wanted to fly a 152 or 172, I could rent one. So I'm very grateful for that because waiting for this airplane to get done to go fly would be pretty painful. One of the biggest weights off of our shoulders recently was getting these wings both varnished. The 100 plus hours of smoothing the wing surfaces with epoxy filling and sanding them over and over again is finally done. They're ready for the fuel tanks to be installed, the brake lines to be installed, and for the most part, to be covered with fabric. These wooden wings are known to be some of the best wings ever made, just based on pilot reports. So really, really cool that they're finally in a worthy shape to fly again. Before covering these wings, it was important to make sure that they're gonna fit on the fuselage. So one of the things that we needed to do was trial fit each wing on the fuselage to make sure that it fits. Once the fabric's on, you don't wanna to try to put the wing on and find out that it's not fitting on easily. So with the help of four other guys, we, we trial fit each wing one at a time on two different occasions. And it was a huge relief to find that not just one wing, but both wings fit on nicely. The fuel tanks, the fuel tanks have been cleaned. Those are gonna be installed sometime in the near future. We're still gonna to need to wedge something on each side just to ensure that they're not gonna move around at all from all the vibration. Um, I know some people have used balsa wood for that. We may do something like that, or we may do something like a modern foam, a non-expandable, non-flammable foam. Brian has continued to make more repairs. After making the second wing tip featuring balsa wood, he's also had to make some repairs on the flaps, which he's working on right now as we speak. We had another set of flaps shipped to us by Michael Farmer, thank you. So what we ended up doing is actually taking flaps that came with the project and we're using some of the new flaps that were sent and kind of combining them for our flaps because they both needed different things done to them. So Brian's handling that. Another giant leap for us was getting our hands on some drawings. A guy by the name of Scott Thomas mercifully sent us a roll of much needed prints. Some are even original. It may not be all the prints we need, but it's a tremendous help for now. I've been really excited to show everyone this trim screw assembly. This complicated little piece is nearly impossible to find, especially brand new. 
a guy by the name of Bruce Cohen machined this particular one and we bought it from him. He spent years off and on trying to figure this thing out and it took him a month to machine it. Sometimes you get lucky or maybe it was meant to be. But uh, that trim screw assembly, man, that was a nice problem to have checked off the list. And like I mentioned before, Brian is capable of machining these, this stuff, but man, it sure is better to not have to do that. Saves so much time. Anything that takes time like that could add months onto the project. Besides trying to finish the repairs on the flaps right now so that we can start fabricating the smaller pieces, we also need to recoat the stabilizers with the proper coat to be able to fabric those and get a canvas made up for the back seat. Brian also made up a new back floor. So look at this beautiful new back floor here. So he's done the front floor and then now the back one. We gotta figure out what to do with the tailwheel assembly. Um, right now we just don't have one. It'd be nice to have a steerable tailwheel assembly. So I'm working on that. A lot of this is just calling using the phone, trying to network, trying to learn who to talk to, who might have parts. There's probably a ton of these airplanes just sitting out there and there's no way to contact these people or families that may have one. Also working on finding cowling parts. The cowling parts we have are just not good, we've determined. So we're trying to get some new cowling parts, which I'm working on actually this week. Why, why, why would you cut that shorter? More things always pop up, you know? We got a list of parts that we need. It's not a long list, but as you continue the, the project, just more things pop up. Not everything is always discussed in chronological order when we're hanging out on what needs to get done. Sometimes you just shoot the sh about random things we need and in no particular order. And when you end up finding a brand new uncut spinner or a brand new factory stamped instrument panel that's blank or a trim screw assembly that someone's already machined brand new, you buy it. I'm really excited for the fabrication process. I have never seen anyone put fabric on an airplane. We're gonna start with the smaller parts, like the controls, flaps, ailerons, and then probably do the wings. We do have an envelope already for the fuselage, so that's nice. I'm excited to see that process and I'm gonna do the best I can to document it. We also have the fuselage on a skewer system, you could call it using two by fours, having the fuselage mounted to these two by fours, it's a great way to be able to rotate the airplane when you need to rotate it on its side, rotate it upside down. That's a great way to do it. And that's what we did. The fuel tank covers have a ton of holes in them. I don't know what people are thinking when they make these things, but we've discovered that they don't really fit with the fuel tank very well as far as like where the cap goes and the filler cap. So um, those just need to be worked on as well. In the last video, I remember mentioning that we found a new lock for the baggage door compartment. Well, that lock actually didn't end up lining up properly with the doors. So I ended up taking the original lock to a locksmith and they just made up some new keys for it. So we'll be using the original lock for the baggage compartment door and we got some keys made, so that's nice. Uh, we still need a pitot tube, uh, door latches and handles, an auxiliary fuel tank would be nice. I don't know if we'll find an auxiliary fuel tank. We could make one, but again, it's just having to make one is going to add time to the project. What else? I am also going to meet Joe Bell, uh, who is a good friend of ours now, because we've been I've talked to him a lot during this, this restoration project so far. He's been helping us out, sending us parts. He's up in Ohio. We're down in Florida. He's coming down in a month from now for Sun and Fun, because Sun and Fun got moved to December. I'm actually gonna go meet him there, and I believe he's gonna have a couple more things for us. So that's gonna be really cool too. The pandemic has been a little bit of a setback this year, and we've all been really busy with our different work schedules, but rest assured, there is still progress being made, and we have a long way to go, but we've accomplished a lot through the combined hundreds of hours of work that we put in so far and it is really nice out. So I might go fly the Taylor Craft because it is like 65 degrees and perfect. Hope you guys are doing well. That's it for now.